I am so excited to be here with you, sweet community, this morning. Thank you, Amanda and Maddie, for your great presentations. I am Christy Johnson Smith, and I'm an R&D project manager at a company called Molecular Devices. And I have a confession to make. I am an imposter. Are you an imposter? I'm not talking about pretending to be someone else and coming up with some elaborate scheme to swindle money out of people, no. I'm talking about imposter syndrome. This is where I doubt myself and my abilities and sometimes I feel like a fraud. It can manifest itself in a very negative inner voice. It can sound like, do I deserve to be here? They must have made a mistake in hiring me. I'm not as good as they think I am. If they find out I don't know the answer, they're gonna fire me. Have I done enough? Should I have worked harder on that? Does this sound familiar? Am I the only one hearing these voices? Or are you hearing these voices too? I'm curious what your own inner critic is saying to you. So if you don't mind, and if you're brave, Pop something in the chat on what your inner critic is saying to you. And while you do this, I'm going to go through a few more that I've heard recently in my own head. How about this? I feel less savvy than my male counterparts in this role. I'm not even sure I'm cut out for this. I couldn't possibly ask for a raise because I'm not sure if I'm really doing a good enough job. All right, Boom Sarah, do we have any? Any brave souls willing to expose their inner thoughts? Yes, Elle said, you're not qualified enough for this. Um, I personally said, I still question this every day. I'm like, how did I get hired right out of college? Like, how did I get this role? Like, why did they pick me? I feel like I'm not good enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's brutal, right? Brutal to hear these voices. And I will tell you, my imposter syndrome has been raging recently, even for this talk. Like, Christy, you don't know, you're not a good enough speaker to speak at the SWE Spring Summit, or I recently started a job search after 18 years with the same company. Who's gonna hire you, Christy? You don't know enough to do something different. What are you thinking? And these thoughts, these negative thoughts can have impact. It can prevent you from speaking up for yourself. It can stop you from asking to be as equitably, equitably paid as your counterparts. It discourages, discourages, discourages you from taking credit for your hard work when credit is due. It deters you from exploring beneficial relationships personally and professionally. It might even discourage you from taking that stretch assignment that Joe Miller was talking about earlier. All of which can stifle your personal and professional growth. But there's good news. There are ways to direct yourself away from these negative voices in your head. So what do you do when you hear this inner critic in your head? Well, I'm gonna talk about a few things that you can do. First is identify it as a voice. The second is grounding it in new, grounding yourself in a new perspective. I'm gonna show you some somatic tools you can use and also talk about tapping into your inner mentor. The first part is identifying it as a voice and you can label this voice. This voice is not you, it's, it's your inner critic. And if you're wondering how to tell the difference between your inner critic and realistic thinking, well, here are some different ways that can help you identify if it's your inner critic or if it's realistic thinking. Now, your inner critic tends to be speak in black and white terms. You're not good enough for this. Um, versus asking curious questions. Hey, what would I need to learn to, to be able to do this job better? Um, it's is definitely um, a yes or no questioning versus open-ended questioning. It's repetitive. Realistic thinking is more forward moving. It has an anxious tone 
I know my inner critic doesn't always show up as a voice. It shows up as a panicky feeling right here in my chest. <laughs> and your inner critic is fundamentally self-critical, whereas realistic thinking is fundamentally self-supportive. You can create a character for your inner critic. And this helps, this helped me a lot. This is my inner critic. <laughs> She's Miss Marm. She's an old school Marm. And she is that voice in my head. And when I hear her coming, I can picture her and say, oh, hi, I recognize you. You're not Christy, you're Miss Marm. Um, and actually, she, this, it helps to have this character in my head and separate her from me. Um, so just knowing that that is not me helps a lot. And I'm going to talk about what you can, different ways you can um, deal with this character in a minute. The second thing that you can do, so first identify as a voice. This is not you, this is a, your inner critic. The second thing you can do is ground, ground yourself in this new perspective, right? So your inner critic is there to keep you safe. She will show up when you're stepping outside your comfort zone. And knowing that she's there to keep you safe can help you move beyond that voice. Say, hey, Miss Marm, I'm gonna, I know this speech is gonna make you a little bit nervous, but I'm gonna keep us safe in this speech and don't worry about it. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna move forward with this. Um, it can also help to look for humor in it, right? It's kind of a humorous image. Um, also, choosing a core value to lead you instead of fear, maybe choose curiosity to lead you or kindness. Now, some other somatic tools that you can use with your character. Um, I like to remove my inner critic from the scene. Like before this talk started, I walked her out the door, I shut the door and I locked the door. Now she's not, she's not even here right now. And I know this sounds really silly, but it might work for you. You can also imagine that voice in your head just kind of receding off into the distance. Um, you can imagine turning down the volume on that voice. Um, one of my coworkers likes to picture Dr. Evil, right? Going www.sh.com every time she hears her inner critic. And that's what works for her. So just picture something that you can do with that voice, something that would work for you and make, make this, it feel separate from you. I also like to give my inner critic a book to read. Hey, hey, Miss Marm, she loves to read. Read this book while I go apply for this job over here. She's distracted, she's not here right now. Again, I know this sounds really silly, but it really works. The other thing that you can do, if you don't resonate with that inner critic, Character, some people resonate with the inner mentor character. Now imagine yourself, this is a future you. This is you in 20 years, maybe 30 years. It's a more authentic, fully expressed, free from fear version of yourself. You have more experience and you want nothing but the best for the present you. And this version of you knows what you're capable of. And you can contact this version of you when you feel that inner critic coming. You can turn towards your inner mentor. For instance, hey, I'm about to go into this job interview and my inner critic is like spiraling and I can turn to my inner mentor and say, how would she show up to this interview? What would she say? What would she want to present? And that can really help break that cycle of negative thoughts that can spiral out of control. <laughs> also, just knowing that it's normal. Imposter syndrome affects highly high-performing people, and it's very normal. The fact that you all are here and wanting to learn about this proves that you're not alone. This happens a lot, and you can also know that when you're getting out of your comfort zone, you can expect this voice to show up. And when you're expecting it and know that it's gonna be normal, that can help you prepare 
for what to do with it when it does show up. So as I, as I went through my job search and I found a new job and I was so grateful, well, guess what? My inner critic showed up on my first day of work, of course. Um, so it's always there, but now I feel like I have better tools to deal with her. And the goal is to really to recognize these, inner, these negative thoughts and name them and not let them determine what you do. Doubting yourself is normal, but letting it stop you, that's a choice. So just in review, maybe, maybe I'm not an imposter after all. Maybe you're not an imposter or after all, maybe we're all just works in progress. So the next time you hear that inner voice, that negative inner critic voice, and you feel like an imposter, recognize it, name it. It is not you. It's normal. And use any of the tools I've talked about here today to quiet your inner critic. And access your inner mentor for that wisdom. You you have all the answers inside of you. And if you want to learn any more about these topics, I highly recommend the book Playing Big by Tara Moore. She goes into much greater detail in all of these and how to access your inner mentor. Um, and it's really helped me. And here's my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me and please connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm always growing my network. So if you have any questions or if you just want to tell the group how you've conquered your inner critic, I would love to hear that as well.